Hello, Nuggets. Okay, so second blog today. Um, firstly, I wanted to address this. That looks like um, this kind of thing fat people get. <laughs> I don't know. I saw it on the last video. I was like, God, that looks terrible. That's where I, that's where they failed to put my IVs in. They actually end up putting it in my hand, which looks absolutely fine. But they missed a vein twice, um, which is always so embarrassing because I'm fat. I don't need to keep saying that. You're watching the video. But um, I always worry, well, maybe my veins are below several cubic yards of fat. I always feel so bad for the nurse. So I, I overcompensate. I'm like, hey, oh, yeah, yeah, it's tough. But um, the first nurse couldn't find the vein. And she was stressing out, so she called her friend over, who was much more comfortable but didn't want to give me her name. Not like I was like aggressively saying, what's your name? I was like, hey, what's your name? And she said, yeah, I don't think I'll give it to you until we see if I get your vein. She was joking, but it was pretty funny because she did a botch job. <laughs> she was all over the place. And uh, it doesn't hurt, does it? Oh, it does hurt, actually. Anyway, so that's from the IVs. God, maybe I just take a long time to heal. 11 days, you would think they would be gone. Anyway, so the other reason I wanted to make a video today, which is, and if you don't watch my gaming videos and you just watch these blogs, this will be boring to you. But it's about the game Rust. So I bought the game Rust about four years ago. I don't know, a long time ago, three, four years ago. And um, I never played it. I just, I have loads of games that I, you know, I see them on sale. I'm like, oh, I'll grab that and then never play them. But I started playing Rust. Firstly, fantastic games by Face Punch Studios. Obviously a very good team, really good development. Um, really enjoyable, really interesting game. But basically it's a PvP game, right? So you, you start out as naked on the beach, on a beach, with nothing. And you have a rock and a torch. And then you gather resources and you craft new things. So you craft a pickaxe. And then you can build yourself a base. And uh, then you can gather materials and metal and smelt them down. And eventually make guns and buy, make armor and all that. And you basically get stronger and stronger. And then about every month, every server's different. But at a minimum, once every month, everything is wiped out. So you start again from scratch. And they do that in order to keep the game balanced. So that really good players at the end of the month are just going to be so powerful that new players can't go anywhere near them. And every month it gets wiped. It doesn't totally balance it because the players that are that good, just the, the start of the new month, they're so good that they know how to do better and win. But that's gaming. I mean, that's okay. That's what it's supposed to be. But the reason I'm making this video about it, apart from it being a good game, is that um, because it's PvP and you go on a server and there might be up to 400 people. I've seen a 400-person server. It wasn't full, but let's say there's 100 people on this island map, right? And everyone's trying to gather resources. Everyone is fighting each other. And it's a really interesting experiment on the psychology of people, of the way people behave when they have an opportunity to, in a game world, either change your life for the positive or change your life for the negative. And it's remarkable. I wish I was a psychologist. And if you are a psychologist, you should go look at that game. I know we have MMOs and we have stuff like that, but those, those worlds are very controlled, right? And to grief a player, as they call it, to go out of your way to ruin a player's day, you kind of break the rules a little bit, right? And you play the system a little bit, and you find alternative ways to troll that other player. Whereas in Rust, that's the game. The game is, go take that guy's stuff, right? You don't have to take that guy's stuff. Sometimes you do, actually. Sometimes if there's a particular thing you want, the only way to get it, and unless you want to just, like, play the lottery and f find that object is to go kill that guy but in general you don't have to go kill the other guy but it's kind of the point of the game is go take that other person's stuff or form an alliance with them but because everyone can take your stuff and even if you form an alliance that guy can turn around and shoot you in the head right even if you form an alliance uh, with that person you're always running that risk of at what point are they going to turn on me at what point are they going to decide, do I want this to be a long-term relationship or not? Because you don't know who it is, right? It's just some guy online. It's the, You have mics, so you can actually talk to each other. They have voices. People play characters on there. It's so interesting. People pretend to be terrified and then, you know, they're, oh, please help me out. I'm just a newbie. They call them nakeds, right? Because you start <laughs> completely naked. It's awesome. Um, I'm a naked, please help me. And then you're like, okay, come with me. I'll give you something. And then they whack you over the back of the head with a rock and take it. But psychologists... 
go look at Rust. It's extraordinary the way people are. Um, firstly, how vitriolic some people are. They're just like mean and just they go out of their way to find everything they can to screw you over. Like they want that it's almost like um, a psychopath. It's almost psychopathic the way they do things, right? They're like, hey, dude, no, I'm, I'm going to help you. Just um, listen, up. I'm going to leave the gun on the ground, right? You can come out. I'll even let you have the gun. You come and so you walk out and they pull out their other gun. They blow you in the head and they know you've got nothing. It's just the sheer joy of doing that, right? Or the sheer joy of just taking 10 rock off of you or some, which is a, like a, you know, very uh, low value resource. Well, it's not that. Anyway. Um, it's just such a fascinating thing. Then there's other players who will kill you because they're terrified. I had that happen to me the other day. I was a naked, so I just started on this server, and I'm just hammering on a tree. And when you start mining, like you hammer on a tree to get wood or a rock to get stone, um, it makes a loud noise. Like it's what, apart from gunfire, it's one of the loudest noises. So a lot of people can hear it. So I started hammering and there was a guy who came up and just, I, I heard him come and I turned around and looked at him and he was just standing there with this crappy early shotgun, like a, I can't remember what it's called. And he just looked at me for a second and he just blew my head off. You don't die instantly. I think sometimes you do, but I, you go to a wounded state and then you'll die. As I'm lying on the ground wounded where you can't do anything, he runs up and goes, sorry, dude, I just, uh, I, I didn't know who you were and I couldn't take the risk. And then he blew the rest, blew my head off and killed me fully. It's so interesting. He killed me because he was terrified that I was going to kill him, which I had no intent of doing. But how does he know that? In this world, there's no truth. In the game world, and there's no truth. Because I could say to him, no, I'm not. I'm just collecting rocks. But I could totally be one of those dudes. Now, I think I'm a nice guy. And in game worlds, I don't play the evil side when I play Star Wars games. I, I still play myself, an extension of what I'd like to be. My favorite universe is Star Trek where this, this kind of nirvana, you know, this utopia. So I represent that when I play games. I try and be as nice as I can. Not because I think, you know, like, I'm just a good person. It's the way I like to play. I like to play that way. But this guy didn't know that. And no matter what I'd said on the mic, there are psychopaths out there in that game who are so good at convincing you that they're good people. You have no idea what's going on. They're all Christian Bale. They're all American psychos, man. And it's... Um, it's so interesting that's why clans form right and so clans will form up and they'll get together as a group and they have this tentative kind of connection where they all believe in each other but then there's always a leader of the clan who has certain codes that they don't have because you never know you might bring someone into the clan who play the game with you for a month well servers only last a month for maybe a, a couple of weeks or a week and then raid you and then they'll take everything from the clan and, and piss off so it's this, it's a real view of, I wonder what post-apocalyptic society would be like. I guess the difference is you respawn, right? And maybe people would be a lot more cautious if you didn't respawn. Um, it's also interesting because you have to adjust to loss in that game, you know? And even though you respawn, when you respawn in that game, the guy who killed you has probably taken everything you have. So if you've like worked really hard and got yourself a bow, which isn't, isn't that hard to get, but let's say it is. And you've got yourself a bow and you're really proud of that bow. And then a guy comes around the corner with a gun and he shoots you and he takes your bow. You wake up on the beach and you've got nothing. You can go find your body. You can go run often a long way unless you've set up a spawn point. You can run a long way, go find your body, but it's probably gone. They've probably taken it. If they haven't, someone else has come and looted the body. Um, you have to get used to losing stuff that you make. And that's an interesting experience. I think it might be healthy to learn that. <laughs> I, like, I just feel like, like when you get burgled, I've been burgled in real life. It's one of the worst feelings in the world. It's hard to explain what's going on, but you feel so violated that someone came into your space. This game, on a very minor level, acceptedly, uh, exposes you to that all the time. And I'm getting better with it now. So I've played it for a few days now. I'm a little bit hooked on it. It's really good. But... I got one, I had one run where I was like, I had some C4, which I couldn't blow. I'm like, oh, shit, I've got C4, I can blow bases up. And I'm thinking, shall I go raid that base? Shall I go become that person? And I wanted to do it. I didn't get to it. I'll tell you why in a minute. But I wanted to do it just because I wanted to experience what it's like. I didn't think about how I would ruin that guy's day. It's the point of the game. Hopefully they accept it. But the point is, before I could even do that, someone, when I was offline, broke into my... Um, base which I probably hadn't built very well but they broke into my base and they wiped me out and I woke up 
and they killed my spawn point. So I woke up naked on a beach. <laughs> I was like, where's all my stuff? And I went back and they destroyed my, my tool closet, which kind of stops your base from decaying. So my base had decayed a little bit and it was just empty. It was gone. It was this, um, it was this abandoned shack. And the first time that happened to me in the game, I was like, oh, God, fuck, man, that's so annoying. Why do you do that? Ignoring that that's the game. But then this time it happened, I was like, oh, oh, I'll have to go get more C4. It was weird. I'd adjusted. I was like, okay, yeah, that's the game. You've got to accept loss. Very interesting psychological experiment. So, yeah, if psychologists are watching this, firstly, what are you doing down here with us? <laughs> um, but secondly, take a look at Rust. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. It brings out the best and the worst in people. You know, and some of the game, you actually don't even buy the game. Just watch some of the YouTube channels. They're fascinating. There's this one guy, I don't know his name, I think his name is called Rust Academy. Well, it, that's the channel, it's Rust Academy. All he does is raid bigger bases. Now, there's talk that it's a setup and it's fake. I don't give a shit about that. It's awesome watching him, where he just goes in alone and raids these enormous bases that are often held by clans. So, dozens hundreds potentially of people gather resources they pull them together they build a huge stronghold that you can't get through this guy can and he just goes in and he's so methodical about it it's so he's he's ganking people right he's, or he's rather he's taking their stuff he's breaking all their hard hard earned work he's going in he's destroying all of that to get their loot so he can get out and get his own world but he doesn't do it with mean he's not like yeah i'm gonna screw these guys over um it's just it's just work for him. He's just like, hmm, it's interesting. It seems like they have a wall here, so I wonder where they put this here. Oh, let's try opening here. He's so matter-of-fact about the way he does it, which is another psychological trait that's interesting. It's almost emotionless, you know? It's just a game. You can't read too much from it. But if, if anyone were a sociopath, that guy might be. <laughs> Sorry if you watch this, dude. <laughs> I love your channel. But he's so matter-of-fact about it. And occasionally he'll run into a base that's really well-designed and... It's got really good sentries that kill you and clever wall layout. And it's tough for him, right? And he gets pissed off. And he's like, this is so unfair. Oh, this is annoying. Look at that. He's pissed off that those people have done a good job protecting their home. <laughs> uh, often, though, he will then say, like, it's very clever design. You know, okay, yes, this is clever. But I'm just going to go and destroy their next one. So maybe he's not sociopath because that comes out of him. Anyway, that was it. I wanted to make it on Rust. If you're not playing it, go play it. It's a really good game. It really is. It's, it's, it's up there as one of the best games I've played. I'm not, the problem is I'm not good at combat. I'm just not. I'm not fast. First, but I used to be okay. I was never that good, but I was okay. Now, I rarely play them. So I'm terrible. And a big part of the game is combat. Like if someone caught, catches me out in the open, I'm dead. I'm like, oh, where's my bow? I've got, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Play Rust. It's fantastic. It's really worth it. Face Punch Studios great job i might write to them see if they need an, a narrative director because <laughs> i could write some great stories and that although there's no npcs there are npcs actually they're just random people who walk around and kill you occasionally they're like scientists or military hmm maybe i'll write to them see if i could join that team because they're good all right you little nuggets go play rust if it's post-apocalyptic i love you let's make it through let's work together give me a shit <laughs>